When I was 15 years old, I wasn't really making very good choices and I went to see my boyfriend. I tried drugs for the first time, but I didn't know that he had laced it with something. I was raped that day and a few weeks later found out that I was pregnant. Everybody told me, you know, you're only 15, you can't, you can't do this. So I had an appointment at an abortion facility. In the interim, I went to a pregnancy crisis center. So they took me into the, the ultrasound room and they turned it on. All you could hear was a heartbeat. And it's like it took over the whole room. That day, I decided that I couldn't have an abortion. I knew the story of King Solomon asking for wisdom and God granted it because he was so sincere in his request. So I asked him, please give me wisdom. Please tell me what to do and I will do it. He said adoption. I called one of the adoption agencies and the very first profile that I looked at was the family that I chose. To them, she's not a rape baby, she's a miracle. She is the answer to 10 years of struggling with infertility and not able to conceive. She's not an exception, she's a baby. The pro-life movement is over 41 years old. New battlegrounds emerge that were unimaginable just 10 years ago. We see the need to retool as a 21st century pro-life movement that is able to not only speak in the public square, but to help formulate policy at a national level. Georgia Right to Life operates as a three-legged stool. Legislation, education, and political action. Legislatively, we're looking at reducing the amount of abortion through regulating the ambulatory, non-ambulatory surgical centers. And of course, that will deeply limit the ability of abortionists to accomplish their butchery. While we're working on the legislative side, we're also engaging in the educational side and changing hearts and minds. When donors give to Georgia Right to Life, they're supporting our educational programs like the Pillars of Personhood, which trains how to dialogue, not argue, but to dialogue effectively about the pro-life issues. When I first found out about the Georgia Right to Life Oratory Competition, I was very excited because this is an issue I've always been passionate about. When I saw the opportunities presented to me after winning the oratory competition, I was immediately drawn to being an intern at Georgia Right to Life. This past Saturday, I went to a Pillars of Personhood seminar where one of our other staff members here gave this great PowerPoint presentation on personhood. Looking at bioethics, cloning, stem cell research. Human experimentation without informed consent. These are all issues in the public square that are being debated. I think that the most important group of people that we need to reach with the pro-life message is our children. So that when someone does make a mistake or a tragedy occurs, they already know that life begins at conception. And I didn't know that when I was 15. I was offered free birth control more times than I could count, but never once was I told that you could get pregnant. Nobody tells you that. They just, if you do get pregnant, here's an abortion. I knew almost nothing about abortion. In fact, I knew very little even about biology. I didn't believe that a life was really a life until 20 weeks. I made a 180 degree change after seeing the pillars of personhood. Georgia Right to Life chapters are the communities of pro-lifers functioning as a coordinated whole with each other rather than just individuals. Anytime you have a small committed group of citizens willing to work together and work tirelessly, God will use the least of these to accomplish what He wants to be done. It was through a local chapter that I saw, even if all I'm doing is standing on a sidewalk holding a sign and praying, that's still a start and that's something that a local chapter can give me the guidance and direction for. We have just in the last week been contacted by three of the swing states in the early presidential primary, all of which declared for adopting the Georgia model as their political endorsement strategy. Our goal is to see that list increase to the other 20 states that have contacted us to help them implement a similar Georgia strategy. No exceptions, no compromise. One of my favorite things about Georgia Right to Life, and I've learned this in my time here, is that they set standards and they stick to them. I think that as a society, we have drifted away from respecting God. So because we don't respect God, we don't really care that things are made in His image. 
If it's wrong to kill babies because life starts at fertilization, then it's wrong to kill all of them. Not just the planned and the perfect and the, and the pretty. People will say, let's save the 90%. Why are you focusing on the 10%? But the problem is, since Roe v. Wade was passed over 40 years ago, we haven't saved the 90%. Let's try something different. If we believe this, then our actions need to back it up. The number one need for Georgia Right to Life to optimize the effectiveness of this organization would be to add additional staff. Imagine what we could do. The other side has full-time employees working to kill babies, but we often only have part-time hobbyists working to save them. Investing in George Right to Life, it's an investment in eternity. When you think about it, there is no value it can put on the life of a child or any other human being. Look at the resources that God has blessed you with. Ask yourself, is there really anything that I could use these resources on that is of greater priority than the fight for life? We are just a state organization that's being called to do some extraordinary things. Georgia Right to Life are my heroes. They fought for my daughter's life, and I will praise them and I will stand with them no matter what because of that. Hopefully one day we won't have to use pro-life to describe that stance because abortion will be unthinkable just as slavery is now unthinkable. I am so grateful for everyone who has been a partner with Georgia Right to Life through the years. We need that partnership more than ever. We can expand and respond to the opportunities that God has given us, to His glory, that we can be a voice for the voiceless.